Courtney Barnett, thanks for coming in and doing this with us. No worries. Really appreciate it. Uh, and congratulations. Tell me how you really feel. I mean, that's a great record. Thank you. You have to be proud, right? Yeah, I am. I, uh, I, I certainly am proud, yeah. So when you were working on this before the album even came out, you posed that question on your website and asked for people to, to answer that mm -hmm. for themselves. Um, and you got like all kinds of different answers, right? Yeah, it was pretty, um, it, was, it, was, it was really uh, quite incredible to read through uh, what people shared and, and uh, yeah, I, th I think the, the, the mix of the, the answers was really interesting and some people were very uh, vulnerable and, and, um, and shared a lot and some people kind of, you know, took a more uh, uh, kind of laid back, funny approach and it was a, it was a good mix. You know, it's funny, I was kind of wondering what that meant to you and if lyrically you were trying to answer that question for yourself with this record. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think a lot of the album is um, was kind of digging and looking for uh, deeper, kind of more honest answers that weren't kind of hidden with um, or like kind of clouded with sarcasm or you know, that kind of defense that we put up against ourselves to, to protect ourselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I, was, I was kind of trying to come back to it constantly. You know, I, I, when I think about your work, all of your lyrics have always felt so human. Like there are things that you could comfortably sit and say to another human being mm. without, in normal conversation, without seeming pretentious or you know overly careful but they're always perfect even though they sound easy and i think that that ease of lyrics really made me kind of surprised to hear that you were working through some writer's block because they're so natural it seems like they should flow easy right yeah oh well i mean yeah, it's funny, like, that keeps coming up. I guess I said I've talked about it, but, I mean, I don't think it... I don't know if it's writer's block. I think it's just how I write. I think it's just always writer's block. It's like a constant... It's just hard. Um, so I guess it's my own fault, because I said it once, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't think that writing is, is easy for me, so... Um, and may, and that's probably why I enjoy it and keep coming back to it because it's a it's a challenge and it and it and it takes a it takes a certain amount of effort to uh, to kind of reach a reach a conclusion or or, or, or further towards a, an idea, but um, yeah, I think that writers the idea of writer's block is just a, con a constant <laughs> state yeah. of mind. The things that you've said sort of helped you through that were the work that you did with Kurt Vile. Mm. and the work that you did with Jen mm -hmm. Clover. And uh, but the one that kind of struck me was a friend gave you a typewriter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just like uh, using different tools and different methods and, and um, distractions, you know, changing kind of lanes and changing speeds. And um, I think that's enough to kind of jolt, jolt ideas, you know, into, into different... Um, just different levels and and I think it I think I just need that a constant kind of um changing so is it you know I'm, I'm just curious because I'm trying to get the right mental image was it an electric or were you pounding out on a manual it's like a manual one yeah yeah, yeah I had an electric one when I was a kid um but it's just a Olivetti or whatever it's called, yeah. You know, it, it, like I'm just, you know, intensely curious how hard it is to get like a typewriter ribbon. <laughs> you know? uh, you can get them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I think there's some places, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, I found them. I think I ordered it online. <laughs> yeah. So you, uh, you overwrite and then edit. Yeah. You leave about 75% of it by the side of the road. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think that's, I think that's kind of necessary for me. <laughs> I think, yeah, a lot of the working, uh, I don't know, I might come back to it or there's, there's always something kind of good 
So you good. save the 75%. Yeah, I mean, I don't throw it away, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, I just think it takes a while to get to the, to the good bits. You know, your songs have always sort of spoken to things that matter, but you've always <laughs> done it, or not always, but mostly done it in the past through stories. And this time you've sort of walked away from the story side and just gotten to the, to the crux of what you're trying to say. Was that intentional? Mm, no, it wasn't intentional. I didn't, I didn't really think about it. I you just... were trying to be more vulnerable? Mm, not really. I think I was just trying to uh, be more open. Um, and yeah, I wasn't really, I didn't really th realize that I wasn't writing. I mean, they still feel like stories to me. Yeah. The, one of the things that I thought was sort of interesting is this sense when you're writing of like, are you writing for others or are you writing mm. for yourself? Because, you know, I've always sort of had a really simplistic view of, well, you know, the artist writes for themselves, but they do it in such a broad way that, yeah. you know, it informs our own lives and that's what makes it so special. But there are times when with you it gets flipped around a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that that idea of, um, you know, of uh, it's something I think about a lot and talk a, a lot about with friends of, of um, I mean, because you can't totally ignore the fact that someone will, I think there's always the idea that someone else will read or listen to what you're doing or like if, I don't know, someone posed the question of, you know, would you still write if if no one was going to read it or would you, you know, um, and uh, I don't know, it's something I hadn't really thought about because I think I started writing obviously with no one reading it um, and then um, it's grown over time and yeah, I don't really, it's kind of like a blurry line of, of, of what level is for you or what level is for someone else. After you got the record mostly written, you booked a studio just to give yourself a deadline. Mm. Yeah. You work better that way. Oh yeah, I need a deadline or <laughs> I can get nothing done. <laughs> and then once you go into the studio, it's really long days. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, 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 I work really hard. I mean, the first, uh, the first deadline I, I didn't make, the first deadline I set myself I didn't make. I, I, um, but maybe I needed to break that one so I could make the next one. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I read something that you said that was almost exactly the same thing that David Byrne told me one time, that when he liked to walk to the studio. Yeah. Because he would sort things out in mm. his head on the walk. And those 30-minute walks, 40-minute walks to your studio serve the same purpose for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I do that a lot. I, I, um, I mean, I would listen back to things or I would just, um, I think I just needed that time to, uh, between home and studio and just, uh, I think I'm a real kind of loner personality and, and a lot of the time I'm surrounded by people or especially in that environment, like in the studio, you kind of got people around and, or, yeah, I just, uh, I really need my <laughs> time alone or I can't do can't deal with the other times. Well, you do record with a band, mm. but before you went into the studio, you sort of did your own demos playing all the parts. Yeah. So sort of a solitary lead in. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the writing process for me is very solitary. And then the, um, I, I kind of, um, yeah, it, to take the next step towards the 90% mark. You know, the, the, some of the songs on the album were finished recently, but started as early as your, you know, mid-teens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but mostly music? Yeah, I mean, l I don't think that lyrics survive that long. Or, yeah, I mean, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they just, obviously, like, on a different, just totally different kind of planet of of um, headspace and but but musically like yeah there's a song from when I was 13 and um, 
and another one from when I was 15 or 16. And um, I mean, they've just kind of been rattling around in the back of my head since then. And they've never had, I've never been happy with, with lyrics or melody that I've come up with. And for some reason they, uh, you know, they came back around for this project and made sense. You know, it's, it's crazy to think about it that long because you know, when if you did something at thirteen, you didn't even record your first EP until you were twenty-three. Yeah, it was ten years there, yeah, true. right? Yeah. Um, so, what is it with you and Polaroids? Because <laughs> um, you had a camera sitting on the desk while you were working on lyrics, right? Oh yeah. Oh, I've got a messy desk. I got lots of, lots of things. Were you taking a selfie every day? I, uh, I, I kind of did like, I started this kind of self-portrait series and uh, it was a big, uh, I guess it was a good uh, kind of procrastination tool <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I just, um, I had this bunch of, I got this bunch of new film and I just, uh, I was going through so many uh, emotions while writing so I think um I think I just became interested with with the visual um how that translated visually yeah. um you know like could you see that um the kind of amount of of um you know desperation and, and pain that was that was happening and uh the answer is kind of no you just like you just look like you always again. look, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're an artist, and you've always been really hands-on about the images that represent you and the packaging and all of that. But the cover of this one is one of your Polaroids. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thought. I mean, it was. I think a lot of the photos didn't really show that much, but the one that I ended up picking was. Um, I thought it was really a powerful image, and there's a. Uh, it does capture. It did. It did capture like a a look that um <laughs> that was that I couldn't um, understand really. Or like it, it it had a deeper a deeper kind of um questioning to it that made sense to the title. So when you were working on the lead up to the album, you met with some artists, and mm. you gave them cameras and film and said, tell us what you really feel, Yeah, and sent them out, and then an art show resulted. Yeah, well, I didn't meet with them, but I, I, the, we, we just yeah. kind of seen the stuff, yeah. And um, yeah, it was a really, um, it was an amazing um, art show that, that, that kind of, that grew out of it. Um, and such, I mean, it's such a broad kind of topic to, to give someone, but I, I like that that's the, you know, everyone kind of took it in their own, um, their own stride and took their own kind of, made their own meaning out of it. And um, yeah, it was a really, um, and then we also had the, the you know, submissions that people had, um, had written in and um, yeah. So, yeah, the, those submissions came through when you would pick up a, it was like a red phone, like it was a hotline. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And We'd if recorded. you picked it up, it'd play back. Yeah. And, the, the, you know, it was a really kind of intimate um, way to do that, I think. Like when you picked it up, it was like it just, I don't know, just this little snippet of, it was very kind of um, voyeuristic, I guess, which I quite like. It was very, you know, very personal and, um, yeah. So uh, just a couple of quick things about some of the songs. Mm -hmm. The album starts off with a, a title that I find really hard to say out loud because it's... Lots of people do. <laughs> yeah, Hopefullessness, uh -huh. um, which is, I think, going to be added to the dictionary in the next year or two. Um, but that's, that's the word that sort of sums up the feeling that you were carrying into the record? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, it ended up being a good first song because it it, um, it feels like it sums up the album pretty well. You know, there's been a lot of talk about your use in the lyrics for Nameless Faceless of the Margaret Atwood quote, men are scared that women will laugh at them, women are scared that men will kill them. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and 
you know, I think it's, I don't even know what to say. You know, I, sometimes as a man, you just want to apologize for your gender. Um, but it's, um, I'm sure that you've gotten all kinds of reaction to the song. Yeah, it's, um, it's been, uh, yeah, I guess it's, a, um, I mean, it's such a powerful line that um, Atwood quote and, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, I, 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 I can only kind of gauge, you know, stories people have told me and what, what it means to them and kind of conversations it sparked with people. Like I remember someone emailed me saying that they, you know, it had, the song had sparked a conversation with their 10 year old son and, and then other, you know, kind of people my age, just um, even like kind of guys my age, uh, not knowing the keys between the finger right. reference and just things like, like just little things, I guess, you know, everyone's aware, well, hopefully everyone's aware of the bigger, the bigger kind of topic, obviously, but um, I don't know, I think that each time you kind of hear those um, personal, more kind of personal stories. Um, it, uh, I don't know, it adds a different level of empathy and understanding t to the listener. You know, one of the things that, um, that I really took note of was you talked in one interview about how both the political and the personal like the problem is communication. Mm. And, you know, so there aren't any easy answers, but there are paths. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't, certainly don't know any answers about, about anything, but I think communication is a good, a good start. You know, one thing I do want to say, too, about the record, though, is that for all the, the seriousness of the last few seconds, um, you know, you've got like a crazy cat video. A what? To go, a crazy cat video to go along with that song. Oh, yeah. Well, it was quite hard to make a video for that song because it was because it's such a serious topic and I didn't want it to um, get lost. Yeah, well, I didn't. I, 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 I thought there's like a fine line between the kind of 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 it, of it being too too um i don't know if earnest is the right word but i just didn't and then i didn't want it to uh to undermine the the um how serious serious it was so i don't know the animation i think was a kind of was a great like lucy dyson who did it she yeah. she did an amazing job and uh, i think it um yeah it kind of found a a a, a good balance yeah and there's there are subtle <laughs> nods to the content yeah. in there too. So, um, you know, the album does everything. It growls, it purrs, so it's very human. It goes all over the place. Uh, it ends on uh, at least a slightly more hopeful note with Sunday Roast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's like kind of a slight melancholy, but like up, upbeat melancholy. Yeah, I think, I mean, that song, yeah, it's definitely more, uh, it's got more hope. Um, I mean, it's kind of about friendship and community and um, coming together to share. Uh, it's kind of like being hopeless, feeling hopeless together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, tell me how you really feel. A Mom and Pop is a brilliant record, and uh, it's a lot of fun, too, despite how serious it gets at places. Um, <laughs> I also wanted to ask you before I let you go, Milk Records. Yeah. You, uh, you know... It'd be totally understandable if all you paid attention to was yourself. Uh, but you've got 10 artists on your label? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I started it like, it feels like five or six years ago now. And um, yeah, we've, it's, it's, it's grown over time. And, you know, we put out friends, friends' albums and um, it's just become this really incredible and uh, inspiring community of of artists and yeah we all just kind of chip in and make it happen <laughs> all right courtney barnett tell me how you really feel is the new record it's on mom and pop 
Uh, and it's really a brilliant piece of work, and we can't thank you enough for taking the time well, to speak with us today. Thank you. <laughs>